So it's called the hive, okay. right? It's it is called the hive. Okay. It's called the hive. It was cool though. I went to your website, I checked it out. I was like, all right, she got the B thing. It's cool, cool B logo. I like that. It was dope. Yeah. yeah. It was awesome. Is it Thank based you. on it, it's it, the way I was reading it too? It's kind of it fits the need for live training that focuses more along the lines of balance and and supporting each other outside of fitness as opposed to just doing the live events and and you know naturally that works too but there's more right to it. exactly right yeah. we uh we're aiming at you know the people who are they have busy schedules they're working yeah. professionals or their students or their full-time parents and awesome. they don't want a single additional thing you know added on their plates if they yeah. can if they can help it so aiming towards those people to show them that health is attainable in a way that doesn't feel like it's also stressful. What do you, what do you get most often as, as the thing that prevents them from achieving fitness? If they are a mom, or they have these, these very demanding lifestyles. So, I mean, time perceived time constraints sure. is, is number one, people yeah. feeling like they don't have the time to exercise. Um, even energy so feeling like they're tired at the end of the day or even you know trying to get that sleep um that extra hour of sleep in the morning yeah and those are really the two biggest and then of course you know enjoyment in the exercise itself so making sure that the classes are fun they're engaging we're creating a community those are the biggest three items i've seen mm -hmm. hold people back from achieving you know fitness in their schedule not to mention just from like a completely like practical marketing perspective, you have some of the best like, like environments to throw these, throw these live streams on. Cause I was looking, it's like, you're in the, like this beautiful Arizona desert. So naturally I think people are attracted to that because, yeah. you know, beach has got the market covered on like, you know, innovative, cool studio looking places. And, and I don't, right. I don't see enough like outdoor shit to like balance out all of the chic kind of uh, studio looking stuff nowadays so just from a purely yeah. practical standpoint i was like that's cool i would watch it for that <laughs> like that's awesome so you know i won't say that i moved to arizona for that reason but yeah. i will say it uh it's Works. a nice touch you know Works. good yeah. good photo shoot backdrops where do you live in arizona because i lived there for a year with my family I'm right in Phoenix, right? Okay, North nice. Phoenix. Awesome. We yeah, lived in, uh, yeah. does the name Anthem ring a bell? Anthem, Arizona? I yeah, don't, it's like a I weird, don't even know. No, it's, it's fine because it's this weird gated community slash gated city thing. It was like an installment okay. and we lived there and it was close to, I think it was closer to like Flagstaff, I think from what I remember. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know. Every time I lived there, I was like, you tell people in Arizona, they'd be like, well, no, I don't know. I'm like, it's, it's bizarre. <laughs> it's like, it's like a Stepford wives thing. So yeah, most people are just like, um, you know, it's Phoenix and that's yeah. pretty much it. Whenever yeah. you live in Phoenix, you're like, oh, people even live outside of Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> For people here in Louisiana, they're probably, they, they only think of Phoenix. It was like, guys, there's other freaking cities in right. Arizona. There's more to it. Yeah. But yeah. No, do you, with your, with your, um, I actually watched, I, I saw your story today where you were kind of explaining to people your methodology a little bit, the way you were seeing uh, training and everything. And I liked what you mm -hmm. said. I just picked out like one thing that interested me. You were talking about the balance aspect. And I, th I think you said, I'm, I'm totally paraphrasing, but you were talking about the need for relaxing and believing in yourself as opposed to being so strict on the workout perspective. And you said specifically, it's okay if you miss a couple of days. So yep. that was cool. Just, just that phrase in and of itself doesn't fit in today's culture. Right. Yeah. Um, my, my biggest thing as a trainer, and I actually started out as an accountant before I really? went to school for accountancy, got my master's in started with a big four firm and then segued into training yeah and I think that's a big reason for my methodology with training and that and but go work out five times a week to build this 
perfect physique rather than doing it for your mental health Mm -hmm. for just overall physical health for you know your confidence happiness for better sleep whatever you know the real reasons why exercise you know is important but we get so caught up and I actually was talking to a client this morning about um whenever I was in a big box gym there was a lot of a lot of judgment, a lot of hate um, on exercising any way besides strength training, Mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, judgment towards any of anything else really. And in my perspective, it's, you know, what, what makes you happy enough that you want to wake up, you know, two hours before you have to go to work and do that exercise, because if it's not going into the gym, then that's okay. You need to move your body. Yeah. And you need to find what works for you. So yeah, finding that balance, um, being, you know, giving yourself some grace, if it's not going in five days a week, those are, those are some big mantras that, that we live by. What are, what are some of the, the things that you, t- how, how, like what happiness is there that people can use, you know, like, what have you seen? Is it kind of happiness that exists, like doing it for their families, that kind of thing? Because that's always the question. Everybody's got different approaches to it. And it, it always has to come from like inside, you know, but what? Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think the big difference for me is doing it for your own happiness versus for other people's oh, happiness. I so got you. That for example, it's okay if you're doing it for, you know, confidence and, yeah. you know, you feel better because your body looks better. Um, as long as you're not doing it for someone else's happiness with your Mm. body being aesthetically pleasing, if that makes sense. Also, of course, I love what you're saying, you know, about, you know, doing it for your, your family is a big thing. You know, do you want to be able to play with your kids? Do you want to be able to, you know, visit your family in Phoenix and go for a hike with your Mm -hmm. daughter? Do you want Mm -hmm. to, you know, whatever it is, I, I think that there are so many aspects of, happiness that exercise creates Mm -hmm. and really just uh tuning into what what that looks like for you and and it's lost today it really is i think i think people don't even consider uh the aspect of a good environment or or something that generates an internal happiness they approach the workout and when that foundation's not there then they just kind of stop what like two three weeks into it it's just it's not even there, there's no long-term success in and of itself. So it's kind of cool. I, I'm, I'm more and more realizing that balance is key. And what you said earlier, you talked about sleep, freaking sleep. Yes. Nobody sleeps, you know? Yes, exactly. Mm. And, and I mean, it's not rocket science that you get a good workout in, you know, after work and mm. you fall asleep so much easier. You yeah. stay asleep. Yeah. Um, versus being restless all night long because you've been sitting, you know, yeah. restless legs and, and everything. So, um, yeah, it's not rocket science that, that part of it. How, how do you, um, and I know this, I, I know like I, I, I train a little bit and I know it's not my scope, but you know, whenever do people come to you with diet questions and everything? Yeah, absolutely. Like dieting and yeah. everything. And, and mm-hmm. it, it's hard to, you know, it, you get into such dangerous territory because yes. naturally you're like, it's like, I know what I want to tell you, but I can't because then somebody's going to get pissed off or whatever. And, and then you, right. you, know, you get into the whole ethics argument. I kind of get annoyed right. at it. I'm like, yeah, sometimes, you know, people say they're registered dietitians, but then, you know, maybe, maybe they, they just have the name. So I right. don't mean to diss those people, but you know, <laughs> yeah. it's happened before. So, you know, naturally, right. but, but no, like what, what do you, what do you think could be a way to approach diet a, as a busy mom or as a busy parent that is simple and not really specific, but kind of allows them to create something better than what they have? So I definitely think that adhering to, if you're somebody that really struggles with understanding even what, you know, 2000 calories looks like for you, or you struggle with somebody, you know, that's, you know, you struggle with intuitive eating, yeah. um, which it's hard as trainers because you're so far removed from that. You're so far removed from 
that real struggle of having no idea what's good for me, what's bad for me, how much I should be eating, when I should be eating. So I think really going down to like the nuts and bolts of teaching people what is good food, Mm. what is bad food, whole foods versus processed foods. Um, Something that I really dial in with my clients who are very far removed is let's just start by eating whole foods. What grows from the ground, what eats, what grows from the ground um, and just just start there. Um, We kind of work our way through that. And, you know, it it is hard if you don't know exactly what their basal metabolic rate is or whatever that is. But as just a baseline, I always just start with, let's eat whole foods. I want you to understand what 2000 calories feels like to you, because if you're somebody and coming into this world Mm -hmm. as a female, um, you don't realize how many people struggle with eating enough. And, you know, the majority of females struggle with eating too much. Well, there's a huge portion of people that struggle with not being able to eat enough. So that's another thing too, is we always have to find that baseline of, do you think you're eating a thousand calories? Do you think you're eating even that, you know, 1200? Yeah. And giving them an idea, because a lot of people that come to me will be in that 1200 calorie range thinking that, you know, those recommended amounts that we got back in 2010 are still the right amount of food for dieting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you said something earlier and nobody's ever said this. And I loved it that you said it. You said how it feels to eat 2000 calories. So no train like like it it's. I feel like that's a great thing to say because it immediately gives them like the understanding that it's going to feel different and you have to go through this process, like eating, you know, how it feels. I love that. I love that because you're right. Yeah. You you don't know. It's, it's almost like you have to push yourself past this mental barrier of accepting that you got to like eat more or, you know, like what you were saying. Exactly. Exactly. Right. I think a lot of, a lot of women are in that, you know, I know yeah. I, whenever I was a senior in high school, I thought that losing weight meant that I had to eat, you know, anywhere from 500 to 1200 calories. Yeah, and so undercut. a lot of people that I'll, that I'll show them how to create a 2000 calorie meal plan, mm-hmm. they'll, they'll literally text me in the middle of the day and be like, Hannah, like, <laughs> I can't eat another morsel of this food. How oh, am I supposed crazy. to do this? I've been eating freaking 800 <laughs> calories for months, years, maybe. Yeah. So it's crazy to see that, that difference, feel that difference. Yeah. And, and it's funny too, because they probably realize that it's a chore on the other extreme. Like, you know, it's a yeah. chore to, you know, maybe be like really obese and, and legitimately have to go low on calories. But then yep. it's like on the other end of the spectrum, it's like, it's like, no, you know, it's also very hard to force yourself to eat more food in order to maintain more exercise. Oh. Like that, it's hard. It is because you're like, I'm not hungry. Absolutely. I don't want to eat I, anymore. Uh, I actually did my first. <laughs> yeah. I did my first bulk this past winter. My first like real strict bulk. And ended eating like 3,800 to 4,000 calories the last about month. And it was disgusting. I was disgusted by myself, you know, middle of the night, I'm eating just whatever I can to get those calories in. And I'm like, God, like people (laughs) really got to do this. (laughs) Yeah. Wait, you said, wait, what'd you say? You said 40,000 calories in a month? Or- 4,000 calories a day for the last month. Jesus Christ. Okay. Wow. That's yeah, high. It, it was, that's really, it was that's, rough. that's intense. I don't even eat that much. Like that's crazy. No, that's it cool. Really though, but rough. like, but like, but like you tell people that because that's freaking hard too. Like that's, right. that's, that's still discipline. That's still strict. You know, I feel like people who wouldn't get it would be like, Oh, that's easy. You just let yourself right. binge. Like, fuck no. Like that's not it. <laughs> It's like, Jesus, but, um, no, but, but that's, how did you, did you feel good? Did you feel like more energized compared to before that? I definitely felt just overall stronger. Like, you know, there wasn't any time where I felt like, okay, it's been, you know, three hours since I've eaten and I'm getting the like hunger cravings. I mean, three hours after you're eating and bulking, you're still full 
as hell. And you're like, I can't have another, you know, bite, but I definitely felt stronger. I felt, um, you know, I, I perform best performance wise at just, you know, that two to 2,500, you know, calories, 2000 to 2,500. Yeah. So performance wise, just throughout the day, I felt good, but lifting wise, whoo, there's nothing like bulk lifts. Well, it's, it's, yeah. And, and you do like strength, strength favors you with, with all the, uh, with all the, uh, Oh, look, we got the same cup. Check that out. There you go. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but, uh, no, the, that. uh, yeah, that's awesome. But, uh, no, it's, it's yeah. The, the feeling of strength as opposed to being so focused on the aesthetic qualities is where people are going nowadays. And I'm, I'm yeah. appreciating more and more the, the shift toward, being focused on performance as opposed to your number on the scale or how you look in the mirror. That's hard. Yeah. It's a tough thing to get past though, you know? To Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you find yourself having to like do that more often with your business and everything? Like try to shift people's mental function with how they approach fitness? Yeah. That's so big. yes, obviously. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, not even. No, I don't deal with that. <laughs> No, they're perfectly fine. They yeah, they're fine. I just don't even know why they come to me. I, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it is, it's really been such an amazing journey, um, going through and seeing all of the different clients that I've, that I've met, that I've worked yeah. with and working with people. I have clients that I've now been working with for a year and a half. And one of the biggest things that we've worked on is it is a journey. It's not going to be overnight. And there's people that for the first six months, we really didn't see progress on the scale or even in the mirror, but strength just kept going up, kept going up. And she loved that. She absolutely loved that. So, you know, six months in, it, it was okay for her that, that the scale hadn't moved, that she really hadn't seen much difference because she was falling in love with the journey. And then once she's fallen in love with the journey, she wants more. And now, you know, the weight starts coming off the mirror, you know, you look in the mirror wow. and that starts changing. So that's been really one of the biggest things for me is teaching people to fall in love with what, the journey. What is it? It may just be like your personality. You may just be like, people just might be attracted to you as like a person, but is there anything like, what do you say to those people then? Because that's interesting that, that you can keep them for six months and really like, is there anything special that you say to keep them on that journey and make them like relax a little bit if they get worried that they're not going the way they want to go? You know, I, I like to educate my clients a lot. You know, I, I like to not give them false hope on what to expect. So Honestly. I'm not telling them that, you know, it's going, you're going to be shedding however many X pounds, you know, in the first month, two months, three months. So not setting those super high expectations, but it really, for me, it boils back down to we're finding what you love yeah. and I'm, you know, I, I'm still making it, you know, I'm, I'm still doing um, the education portion of it. I'm still doing it, you know, in, in a methodical way, but I am taking into consideration what, what they enjoy, because at the end of the day, she's probably not going to work with me for the rest of her life. It'd be yeah. so awesome if, you know, all my clients do work with me for the rest of their life. But in reality, that's not the business we're in. We want to no, make sure that they them to be become confident in themselves do it on their own and sure. so making them fall in love with what they're doing which might take away from exactly what I think so for example same client she loves loves lifting heavy she we tried you know taking kind of a step back from lifting as heavy incorporating a little bit more cardio um, cause it's hard whenever you only see somebody three days a week. So yeah. you want to get the most out of those three days. And so, I mean, two months in, she just looked at me and she was like, Hannah, I miss pushing that heavy weight. And so we went back to it and That's awesome. just incorporated, you know, the cardio on her own. I gave her homework to do. And because she loved our heavy sessions that we did together, she was more than happy to do the cardio on her own. So I really think, you know, if you find what you love, you're going to 
sick with it. Yeah. So that's, it boils back down to that for me. And you listen to your clients too. It's, it's, yeah. it's obvious that you're, you take into account the things that they obviously enjoy doing. And then you make that the foundation and try to progress within their likes. So exactly. Yeah. And, and it all, you know, I was talking to somebody else too, and, and he brought up a good point where it was like, you know, if people wanted to do it by themselves, the power of choice, like just being able to choose something that is yeah. appealing to them is always going to like bring out more motivation and can make, help them continue down that road. So that's cool. Exactly. You know, whether, whether you meant to do it or not, like that's, you know, obviously that's what makes you a better trainer than, than most. So, cause I was always, when I started, I was like, I'm going to get you ripped in a month. Like we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go down this road together and we're going to get shredded together. You know, <laughs> I, well, and I think another thing for trainers to understand is that we are not always going to be somebody's cup of tea. I mean, people that, True. that worked with you, that's what they're looking for in a trainer <laughs> and people that work for they me. Thought they were. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> after a month, I was like, I'm not buff. What gives I'm like, sorry, <laughs> uh, just, you know, I miscalculated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I only see you uh, two hours out of the week. So I told uh, you, you to take the steroids. On? Yeah. <laughs> I gave you the needle. What the hell? <laughs> you didn't listen to me you know that's life of a trainer man yeah you know <laughs> they say don't take shortcuts but you know I beg to differ it's it helps no I'm just kidding. <laughs> you're not cheating you're not trying you know yeah exactly that's what i tell them be like now we're gonna be using some supplements so get ready what do you think what do you think about supplements are you big into a supplement stack lifestyle or is that not you're not about it it's, it's funny you asked me that because I feel like in the mm. last like two weeks, I've been asked this question maybe 10 times mm. for some reason. Um, 11 not times a supplement now. person, hate in my, in my own life, not a supplement person, not a protein powder person. Okay. I strictly, and like, I, I say, I don't want to say never because I, I'm a big, you know, try something once kind of a person. Yeah. So sure. I've tried the supplements. I've tried the protein. Um, I just like the way that natural food works for me and having that balanced diet of, I get all my vitamins and minerals from my vegetables, from my fruits, um, and then having Love that it. balanced diet. So me personally, I've had bad experiences with both protein and supplements. Okay. I never tell a client, you know, you can't do it, but I tell them you can do it without it. Well, that's, that's good because, um, and I'm sure, you know, it's funny. You've probably had friends too, who, you know, they spend a lot of money on supplements. I've had friends, yeah. especially for, for dudes, you know, you want to bulk up. And so you, you go to the store and you're like, I'm going to, drop $300 on my test boosters and my, my protein and my pre-workout and, blah, 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 and you, just, right. you buy all the supplements and you don't even consider the, the, the whole foods that you are neglecting by replacing right. them with the supplements. And um, right. no, it, it's, it's, do you feel like, and this is very specific, but do you feel like people don't eat enough vegetables in general? I don't. Cause that's like, so even for a fit person, do you feel like vegetables are just neglected? I do. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think that even like in the, the strength training world, I see a lot of fitness professionals eating, you know, their chicken and rice, yeah. you know, their bland ass chicken, bland ass rice, which it's, is it, fine. Hey, that stuff's good. <laughs> Don't diss that. You know, no, but it is I'm though, for real. I'm there no, too. It's, it's, I'm hating. It's okay. I'm with you. I'm like, I'm like, fuck that shit. Like Jesus Christ, you know? So, but, so. but why are we not implementing, you know, our vitamins and minerals? People are implementing their broccoli, which they can eat 12 heads of and be perfectly, you know, fine on their macros. So yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, I, I think vegetables it, don't get enough love. Um, yeah. I went, vegan for a year. And so it okay. really made me appreciate my vegetables. Um, and I think maybe that's why like I'm very vegetable heavy, but yeah, they don't get enough love in the industry. I think. 
Did you, okay, so wait, you were vegan, but then you got out of it? I did. Okay, what brought you out of it? What brought you, what, uh, what's like? So. Sorry, I was, uh, there's a lag. <laughs> my, my, no, my that's bad. okay. That's I know, okay, I'm I like, I'm saying it and then it's coming in later quit, so. and I'm like, I'm messing it all up. I think it's my internet. Like I'm in this weird corner section. So like the internet's a little like splotchy. <laughs> so if it, there's like, yeah. Thank, thank That's you for okay. dealing with that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. So I got into eating vegan, um, purely for health benefits. Um, I've always struggled with digestion issues and I've heard that, you know, that's, that's a big health. I nice. did see a huge shift in a lot of things in my digestion um, even like my hair, skin and nails looked incredible. Um, and my energy levels, lots of, lots of good benefits. I only got those benefits if I was strict to a T vegan though. So, um, if I, you know, once, twice a week had cheese on something, or I ate eggs in the morning, or I had meat one day then that week was, was shot. So, um, eating that strict vegan, I saw all the benefits in the world and then having more of a balance, I didn't. So, and I'm a big balance person. I don't know if you've picked up on that yet. Um, <laughs> no. but I'm a big you balance seem, in this no, you life. You seem like you hate it. Yeah. I don't know. Seems like you just not about it. <laughs> 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 no, but I, it, so. it's the, uh, do you think though, I, I like that though. So maybe it's, it, people could potentially do a vegan approach to diet for a short term period of time, just to better their relationship with the foods that they might be get not be getting or focusing on with the more traditional, you know, rice, chicken, plain ass bodybuilder diet. <laughs> you you know? know, I, I actually do. I, I never really thought about the fact that, that, that helped me so much with my appreciation for vegetables, but I think yeah. you're absolutely right. It, it makes you, um, it makes you get creative one with your cooking yeah. because you have to implement vegetables in a way that you haven't before. And it does give you an appreciation for, you know, the protein in chickpeas versus the protein in black beans versus the protein in legumes, nice. um, which kind of sounds like not interesting, but it is whenever you're into nutrition and you think the only way to get your protein is bland ass chicken. Well, you know, there's other ways. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I loved going cold Turkey vegan strict for the amount of time that I did. That's pretty cool. What, what were the, if somebody watched like what, what are good sources of protein to do? I guess legumes when you're like strict vegan, but what can, can you do eggs? No, you can't do eggs. You can't do eggs can't as do vegan. Eggs. Mm -mm. I'm not going to become vegan. So, <laughs> sorry. He's, he's... I know, you know, that was a big part for <laughs> <Darn> me <it>. too. <laughs> yeah. um, I did a lot of um, lentils are, are okay. great source of protein, edamame, um, chickpeas, any kind of bean, of course. Um, and then, you know, they have, they have vegan everything now. So they nice. have almonds based, um, yogurts, chickpea or not chickpea, cashew based yeah. yogurts, things like that. Um, so those are really my, my highest sources. I would say lentils, lentils and edamame okay. were the highest sources of protein. Well, it, and you know, it's fun. I have no problem with veganism. I think, I think too. Uh, just with supplements, you know, like vegan protein powders tend to sit better with people for the most part, just because like forever ago when I worked in a supplement store, people loved the vegan proteins because they had all the enzymes and everything in them. So yep. I, I think it's funny. I think that if you're a vegan, you probably, and, and you, you can testify to this, you probably don't feel as bloated and you don't have a lot of like tummy distress and everything because you've switched and you've gone to other things that aren't like dairy heavy, you know? Exactly. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, I was still working at um, the accounting firm whenever I went vegan and we would literally, we would go out for lunch. It was during our busy season. So we were working, you know, 14 hour days. Yeah. We'd go out for lunch and everyone would eat wings or burgers or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And by 1 p.m., everyone was shot. Everyone was tired. <laughs> like, everyone. Yeah. And I'm feeling good. I'm like, what's going on, guys? Like, <laughs> you guys you doing yeah. naps right now? Let's go. Yeah. So it was crazy, actually. And I think that one of the biggest parts was whenever you do eat vegan, you can't eat cheese. So, you know, that is a big part of like, you know, you're going to have cheese on your burgers. You're going to have cheese, melted yeah. cheese on whatever. So that was a big part for me that it's, it's a little bit easier to say no to the bad food items whenever you can be like, ah, oh, shoot, can't eat it. That's a, that's, that's a good point. No, I, I like that a lot. It's, um, cause, cause it brings it equi- cause you always, whenever you're dealing with diet with a person, I'm sure, you know, it's, it's, you want them to experience that same feeling that you had when you're on veganism and, and you knew you could like make that change, but you can't, it was like, people can't just make those changes like you can, or I can, or that kind of thing. So it's like, you have to right. adapt them. Everybody's different. So not saying, yep. not like dissing on people, like you can't do what I do. Like <laughs> you can't be me. I'm a master of diet, but <laughs> <laughs> no, it's no, just it's... different, you know, for other people, I guess. So. And honestly, even as trainers, you know, I, I uh, had a spurt where I, really was interested in competing and got a coach and the, um, diet plan that he had made for me, oh, I no. quickly realized that I was, you know, a, there are, there are strong people. There are mentally way strong people. And I was whew, oh, eating the it, same thing for like months. I'm like, geez, these people are sucks. insane, but amazing, but insane. But it's, it, do you, do you think that that's, but, but that can't at this point in time where people are competing, I just don't believe that there is one way to go about it. You know, was it like the diet that you, you really like everybody would have gotten, like you have to eat what, like four or five meals a day and then you got to get right. your protein, you got to eat your carbs and you're like, you're like, there's gotta be a better way to do this. You know? I, yes, I completely agree. And that's actually the balance part of it is why I, why I decided that I didn't want to, but I, yeah. I do think that in the future, if I, cause it's still, you know, I think maybe in every trainer is like back of their mind, like, man, that'd be pretty cool to, to compete. It's still in the back of my mind. Um, and if I did, I would want to be able to do it in a way that was attainable oh, for somebody that needs, you know, balance in their life. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, and, and you guys probably, I, I'm sure in Arizona, there might be bigger shows that might have a little more like, like weight to it. So that's kind of, you know, the caliber of competitors might be a little bit bigger up there. Yeah. As opposed to down yeah. Here. So, but I can tell you right now, it's definitely a weird uh, vibe because everybody's like pissed off and, you know, cause they've been <laughs> fasting and everything. And seriously, you're just like mad faces, like just scrunched up, like to just stay. Hated. Oh Yeah it's crazy angry angry i know and like they've been dieting and nobody's talking to you and you're like and it's funny as you're a noob you're just like looking around like you're all just like well i'm just happy to be here you know and <laughs> yeah and everybody right. else is like this is my 50th show i'm mad <laughs> i still haven't won but i'm gonna do it so yeah, yeah i can definitely see myself being that person, you know, bounding in, getting all excited. You guys like, ready for this? And they're like, you guys ready? Ooh. We're going to go up on stage and flex. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Nice. We'll see. We'll see if that ends up being in my, uh, in my to-do list anytime soon. Yeah, no, it's definitely, it's definitely a good experience if you ever get a chance to do it. So it's not, it's, it's good for like one time. And then afterwards you're like, I don't know about this. Like, um, yeah, it's good. it's good for now. My body looks great. I'm going to move on. So, like I said, I'll try one, I'll try something one time and yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah. There you go. Just become like the fit to fat to fit guy where he was like, you know, he got really fit <laughs> and then he just like become, became a, like a puff ball and then went back to fit again. So, <laughs>